And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a filler game. We're going to be taking a look at Colorado, which is a card game uh, with some set collection aspects in which you're trying to do your best to collect certain levels of cards, certain colors of cards, uh, without collecting too many cards of too many different colors. It plays two to five players, uh, it has a relatively short play time, and is probably easy enough to understand for almost all levels of gamer, probably from the ages of about uh, seven or eight up. So, now that we've given a brief introduction to the game, let's take a look at how it plays and what my thoughts are on it. So here you see the very initial setup for a game of Colorado uh, for four players, and you'll see it's a four-player game by these four placeholder cards in the center of the table. Uh, and all you really get with the game is some placeholder cards, uh, and then you have a deck of cards here. And this deck of cards is going to have several things in it. First, it's going to have a bunch of different cards in different colors. So you'll see there's different colors of cards here. There are seven suits, so seven different colors. There are also some special cards, which are just bonus points, so this one's plus two points. Uh, finally, there are wild cards, and they are going to be card of any color. And that's really all there is in this deck, except for one special card here. And this is just the last round indicator. And this is going to go 15 cards from the bottom, so, you know, shuffle out 15 cards, it'll go 15 cards from the bottom, and when that card is flipped up, it's going to indicate that this is the last round of play. At the beginning of the game, or at the beginning of each round, each player is going to get a differently colored card. So let's say, for example, uh, my player has the orange card. And so you have a general indicator of maybe an area you'd like to start in for collecting cards. As I said, this is a set collection game. And now, players would take turns doing one of two things. They would either draw a card from this pile and place it on one of those four stacks. So for example, if I were to draw this card, I like orange. And so I'm going to place this here. Uh, that's my whole turn. And now the next player is going to have a choice. They can either draw this card and place it on one of those piles, or they can take one of these piles of cards. Now, it's pretty early, so they probably don't want to do that yet, so they're going to flip a card, and it's orange. Well, they probably don't want to put this with the other orange, because that's awfully good for me, as we're doing a set collection game, and you want to collect the most of three different colors that you can. So, for example, in this case, if he were to put this here, around my turn, I'm probably going to take this, because I would have three orange. So he's probably going to split those up. And now, neither one of those piles is either better than the other, so uh, it moves on, and I'd be equal likely to take either of those. And then the next player flips a card, and it's gray. Well, now he has a choice. He can either put this on one of the two existing oranges, or he can put it over on a pile that hasn't been started yet. So let's say he puts it here. Now, no pile may ever have any more than three cards in it. So the next player, if he were to flip this, again, he probably doesn't want to put two grays together because that's going to be really good for somebody. So maybe he wants to put it over here. And once the third, pile, or third card gets onto a pile, that pile can no longer be placed on. So this pile here is done until someone decides to take it. But the other piles are still open. So it would keep going around flipping and placing until players decided that they wanted to take them. So maybe one player is really interested in here. Let's say one player had a green starting card, and they're really interested in this pile. They would simply take it, and they would place it in front of them, and they would be out of the round, and they would take this card too to indicate that they're out of that round. Uh, so now this player has an orange, two green, and a gray. And so that would keep going until all players have taken a pile, and obviously once all of the piles are filled up, players are forced to take a pile because they can't place a card. So once this pile were filled, then everybody would have to choose one pile, and they'd choose them, and the round would end. And then you'd start a new round with play passing to the next player, um, until you get through to the end of the game. And basically, all you're going to be doing is trying to collect three different colors of cards, and really no more than three different colors of cards. Because if you go above that, you're actually going to lose points. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at your three largest piles of cards, and if you have six of them, uh, six of the same color, so let's say I had six orange cards. I have 21 points. Yeah, let's say I had four green cards, that's going to be another 10, so I have 31 points. And let's say I have three gray cards, so that's another six. So I have 37 points total. Well, let's say, for example, I also managed to take 
uh, a yellow card. So let's say I took this yellow card here. I have one yellow card and that is not one of my most three, so I'm going to lose another point. So I'm back down to 36. And if I had taken a pink card, for example, I would lose another point because I have one pink card. So I'm down to 35. And so the idea is to collect as many of three different colors as you can while keeping the other colors to a minimum. Wild cards, as I said earlier, are going to count as any color and you don't have to choose until the end of the round. And these plus two point cards are simply going to be plus two points for whoever collects them at the end of the game. Whoever has the highest point total at the end of the game is the winner. Now, there are variants for play, uh, variants in scoring, and for example, in this one, you see that this score side of the scoring card gives you a scalable side here, whereas this one simply gives you less points, and for going over a certain amount, so for example, if you have four of the same color, you get seven points, but if you get five, you only get six points. And if you have six, you only get five points. So there's a kind of a bell curve here in the amount of cards that you're going to want to get. There's also a variant for two players, uh, which uses a different set of cards, but really the, the concept is the same. Collect as many of some cards as you can while having a minimum of other colors. So that's all there is to Colorado, and it's a pretty simple game. Um, you know, it takes a very short amount of time to play. You can play it over and over again, and it really does kind of have a uh, take that kind of feel to it when somebody's got a really nice pile that they're probably after, and then you just drop down a card that you really know they don't want on top of that. You know they're going for pink and gray, and the pile's got pink and gray, uh, and then you throw a brown on it, and they really don't want to add another, uh, another card to their colors. Uh, and so it's very interesting that aspect. It's very easy to play. Um, it's a game that pretty much everybody can enjoy, uh, and one that I think belongs in most people's collections as a nice filler on those game nights. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Sommer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 